So I should say I'm, a, I'm here under false pretenses. I'm a chemist from the University of Nottingham, though I am a council member of the ICME as well. So it's a great privilege to be able to say a few words this evening, both on behalf of the Royal Society and of myself. <coughs> Although I only met him once, Sir Frederick Warner, Ned, has a special place in my heart as he was the last person to survive from my father's cohort of students at UCL, not far from here. Over that direction, I think. Um, and my father read physics while he read chemistry and chemical engineering. And Ned's career spread, uh, spanned both disciplines. He was an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry as well as his roles that you've heard about already in the ICME. And this resonates very strongly with me because I'm a believer in the partnership between chemists and engineers, and I lead a project to promote this partnership at Nottingham. Shortly after my father died, Ned wrote to me. He wrote, there was a small group of us, those were the students, who lunched frugally on bread and cheese in the back parlour of the Bar Le Corn, a pub between H.K. Lewis, the bookshop, and the UCL chemistry department in Gower Place. Our early years, 1929 to 31, were shadowed by the Wall Street crash, but almost carefree until 1931 when the Depression hit us, and we began to become communists and generally raise hell. I did not get a job until 1934, and we drifted apart and dispersed still more 1939 to 45. I had to be constantly abroad after falling out of bed with the company and unemployed at 46. After that, I'd been very lucky and ended up here in Southall, near Nottingham, to retire. It has not happened, as you can see from the letterhead. And I looked and I found a list of several organizations that he either chaired or was a committee member. And this was in 1997, when Ned was already 87 years old. Some years later, I visited Ned and his wife, Barbara, in Southall. Their house was a veritable museum of ceramics, which they collected. Ned was a charming host and gave me a book with the intriguing title, Nuclear Test Explosions, Environmental and Human Impacts, which still fascinates visitors to my office. After that, we corresponded regularly, and I could be sure of receiving a letter from him whenever my name was mentioned in TCE or in the local paper. Ned was elected to the Royal Society in 1976. Last week, I made inquiries about him, and to my pleasure, Ned is warmly remembered. He chaired the working groups that produced two reports, first in 1983 on risk assessment, and the second in 1992, when Ned was 82, on risk, analysis, perception, and management. It was a far-sighted report involving scientists, engineers, and social scientists. The participation of these social scientists apparently caused some excitement among the more conservative elements of the Royal Society, with the result that the preface to the report described it rather coyly as a collection of chapters. It wasn't a proper report. There's still huge admiration at the Society of Ned's decision to visit Kuwait to assess the situation after Saddam Hussein had fired the oil wells as he retreated to Iraq. My Royal Society colleague, Peter Collins, who knew Ned, <clears throat> described him as friendly, an independent thinker with wide interests, who often wore a pink rose in his buttonhole. He was warm-hearted and interested in people. When you talked to him, you had the impression that he cared. What a wonderful way to be remembered. Thank you. <laughs>